In the last episode, we saw that once Andromalius realized he had no escape, he proposed a deal. He asked Vicar that if he let him live, then he would leave Set's body. Vicar refused to accept the deal since he knew Set's soul was no longer in this world. Upon seeing this, Andromalius tried to persuade Osiris, who initially believed his words. But once Andromalius changed his appearance to that of Set and asked for a chance to atone for his sins, Osiris cut off his head. He thought that if he had taken better care of Set, none of this would have happened. Andromalius' head started flying and escaping from the area, mocking everyone. Hugo unsheathed his sword, and in the blink of an eye, he chopped the demon Andromalius' head into pieces, showing Vicar the true power of a master swordsman's fencing skills. Before starting with the next chapter, don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss any new videos of this wonderful series. After that day, several days passed, and people gathered in Baskerville, and began to look at an official announcement published by the Baskerville family in all the squares of the territory under their jurisdiction. In Baskerville, a thorough investigation was carried out regarding the truth about the kidnapping of orphan children and a series of incidents, while compensation procedures were initiated. This announcement contained information about the procedures for seeking truth and compensation for the missing children incident within the territory of Baskerville. The purpose of this announcement was to reveal the complete story and provide compensation for all child disappearances that occurred between 10 AC and 19 AD. Immediately upon reading this news, everyone was shocked, although it had not been revealed that the responsible party had been a high-ranking demon. The terrible acts committed by the second son of the Baskerville family were clearly and publicly revealed. After this, it didn't take long before the public trial of Newt, Set's mother, took place. She was accused of releasing a venomous snake in the children's room, accused of murdering Hugo's first wife, accused of conspiring to kidnap the eldest daughter, and also including charges of complicity in the kidnapping of the children. In the end, she was sentenced to execution on a total of 1642 charges. Although it was quite surprising, she had not been a victim of manipulation by the demon Set. Just before her execution, she simply shouted to be allowed to meet with Set. Subsequently, Set's minions also received the same punishment, and Osiris was responsible for this case. It was carried out entirely under his direction and leadership, although there was one more person involved. Also, there was someone who had received part of Osiris' authority, and that person was none other than Vicar Van Baskerville himself. The anecdotes of his battles with the barbarians, and the rumors that he was the person who contributed the most to resolving this incident, spread throughout the territory. The public sentiment in the territory was filled with discontent but began to change into admiration for Vicar. After that day, Osiris and Vicar took less than a week to finish their work. A high-ranking member of the Baskerville family was executed on the spot, shocking many residents of the territory. With this, the Baskerville law had become so severe that not even family members could avoid it. The perception of being strict and meticulous once again prevailed among the people. While Hugo had Pomerian sitting on his lap, he placed a hand behind her back and asked her how the grandfather had changed. Upon hearing this, she began to look at Hugo with a confused expression and while touching her chin with her finger, she started to think. Several seconds later, she looked closely at Hugo and noticed that something had changed in him. Hugo had drastically changed his appearance as he had now shaved his beard and mustache. He turned his head towards Pomerian and while looking into her eyes, he began to smile. While Pomerian was pointing her finger at Hugo's face, she explained that her grandfather's mustache and beard had disappeared. He was not alone in the office, as Butler Barrymore was by his side, and in front of him were Osiris and Vicar, who were standing silently observing Hugo. As Hugo had Pomerian sitting on his lap, he turned his head towards her and asked for her opinion on her grandfather's new appearance. She started laughing and replied that now her grandfather was boring. Vicar and Osiris began to silently watch Hugo and Pomerian, and upon seeing that Hugo was happy, Osiris couldn't help but smile and feel a sense of peace within. On the other hand, Vicar thought that this was a scene he didn't expect to see immediately after such turmoil. While Vicar was staring at Hugo, he thought that the purge of people related to Set had almost come to an end. He came to the conclusion that now the remnants of the demon had disappeared from Baskerville territory. Vicar was so sure about this, because he had also requested information about other demons from Sindhuendi, and it was only a matter of time before the results appeared. A few days ago when Vicar asked Sindhuendi for information about the demons, she clenched her fist tightly, and while staring aggressively at Vicar, she asked him if he really wanted her to track down the location of a demon of the same level as Andromalius. She also asked Vicar how many necks he thought she had. 
While Vicar was lost in his thoughts, Osiris caught his attention. He slightly turned his head towards Vicar and while looking into his eyes, addressed him as younger brother and explained that all of this had been very tough. Upon hearing Osiris' voice, Vicar snapped out of his trance. He slightly turned his head towards Osiris and, while looking into his eyes, thanked him for his hard work. After this, both of them started to look at Hugo. Several seconds later, Osiris once again turned his head slightly towards Vicar, and, with one eye fixed on him, explained that if he took care of all the related matters, he would be late for admission to the academy. After saying this, he advised Vicar to go get ready. While Vicar was looking at Hugo, he explained to Osiris that he felt the family was still in crisis. Upon hearing this, Osiris asked him not to worry about the family, as this was also Hugo's decision. Vicar turned his head towards Hugo and while staring at him intently with a serious look, he began to wonder why they were sending him to the academy in the current circumstances. He thought to himself that from Hugo's perspective, it would be more efficient to handle things with him since he had a good public opinion. He started staring at Hugo and wondering what kind of plan this was. Osiris turned his head slightly towards Vicar, and upon seeing his expression, he began to wonder what he was thinking. He started staring at the ground intently, and with a smile, he caught everyone's attention. He loudly stated that their father was worried that Vicar would get trapped in the consequences of the power struggle and get hurt. Upon hearing this, Vicar turned his head slightly towards Osiris, and while looking into his eyes, he became somewhat surprised and started wondering what he was talking about. Osiris lifted his head and while looking at Hugo, he told everyone that he felt as if he had recently started to understand their father. While Barrymore had his hands behind his back, he began to look at Osiris and couldn't help but smile. While Hugo had Pomerian sitting on his lap, he simply turned his head towards her, closed his eyes, and with a smile remained silently listening. Osiris also added that Vicar was very clumsy with expressions, so their father was worried about him. After saying this, Osiris closed his eyes, slightly bowed his head and explained to everyone that he was the one who was evaluated as most similar to their father. After saying this, he asked Vicar to believe in him. Vicar simply turned his head towards him and while looking into his eyes, he remained silent. While Osiris was speaking, Vicar heard a noise, so he quickly turned his head forward. In front of him was Hugo, who sat Pomerian on his lap and began to fix her hair with both hands. Upon seeing this, Barrymore approached him, slightly bent over and while looking at Pomerian, addressed Hugo as the patriarch and explained that he had to comb the strand of hair in the opposite direction. This task was very difficult for Hugo. While he was fixing Pomerian's hair, he explained to Barrymore that this was very complicated. Several minutes later, thanks to Barrymore's advice, Hugo was able to make two braids on Pomerian. While she was holding the two braids with both hands, she started staring at them intently and smiling. While Hugo was playing with Pomerian, Vicar and Osiris simply stood there silently watching. At that moment, several thoughts came to Vicar's mind. He was looking at everything again through the eyes of the past. Life before regression was a life on a leash. He had simply been a hound who only followed the leash. In the past, he had simply followed Hugo while taking care of his back. He had always hated him because he didn't know the fact that Hugo also wore a leash. The things Vicar knew were changing. Experience, destiny, the end, and Hugo. Pomerian thanked Hugo, closed his eyes, and with a smile, gave him a hug. Upon seeing this, Hugo was somewhat surprised and slowly began to move his hand towards her back. Upon seeing this, Barrymnor was also surprised. While Hugo was stroking Pomerian's head, he closed his eyes and couldn't help but cry tears of happiness. While Vicar was watching Hugo, he thought that he was looking at a Hugo who wasn't following a leash. The past self of Vicar turned his back on him and began to distance himself from him, because now he knew for sure that the Hugo he could seek revenge on was no longer there. Now Vicar's past self didn't have a leash and was free. While Hugo was hugging Pomerian, he closed his eyes and started crying. She opened her eyes and was somewhat surprised to see Hugo crying. Upon seeing this scene, Barrymore couldn't help but cry. He took off his glasses, closed his eyes, and began wiping away the tears with his hand. Upon seeing Hugo crying because he had found the happiness he had once lost, Osiris couldn't help but smile and feel happy. At that moment, Vicar's past self moved away from him and simply began to disappear. While Vicar had his eyes closed, he started to smile and feel inner peace. With a smile, he explained to Osiris that he was going to go to the academy. Upon hearing this, Osiris closed his eyes and replied that it was indeed a good idea. Behind Vicar there was a chain. He turned his body towards the chain, crouched down and grabbed it with his hand, creating tension in the atmosphere. Then he began to wrap the chain around his hand, and thought to himself that he couldn't break free from this cycle yet. 
At that moment, he lifted his head and an evil energy started approaching him. Demon hands grabbed the chain that Vikir was holding. He stood up, raised his fist and while looking at the demonic hands with a murderous gaze, he decided that he couldn't break free from this cycle yet because true revenge was about to begin. Several days later, on a night like any other, someone broke the giant clock of the clock tower. The culprit was a human who had made a contract with a demon. This demon was fighting against a masked man. Both flew out of the tower and started falling towards the ground. Several seconds later, they descended to the ground, and using his hand, the masked man stopped his body in motion. The demon against whom the masked man was fighting was a demon who had a giant arm, while the body of the demon emitted an evil energy. He clenched his fist tightly and, while staring at the masked man, gritted his teeth and asked him who he was. The man stood up, and as he adjusted his jacket, the demon asked him how he knew that he had made a contract with the demon. The demon gathered momentum, clenched his fist tightly, and began to advance quickly towards the man. Instead of trying to dodge the attack, the man simply started walking towards the demon. This man was none other than Vicar Van Baskerville. He extended his hand to one side and activated the Beelzebub sword. In the blink of an eye, just before the demon could attack, Vicar cut off his arm into pieces using the Beelzebub sword. The demon began to feel intense pain and while he was spitting blood from his mouth, he started wondering what was happening. Gaining momentum, Vicar took a big leap and as he was advancing towards the demon, he began to stare at him with a murderous look. Upon seeing this, the demon tried to defend himself but was unable to. Vicar forcefully stepped on the demon's head, causing it to hit the ground. The demon's hand started trembling, and within seconds he lost his life. While the lifeless body of the demon lay on the ground, Vicar turned his back and slowly began to walk away. As the moonlight was hitting Vicar's body, he slightly turned his head backwards and rested his hand on the mask. Slowly, he started removing the mask and stared intensely at the demon with a murderous gaze. He told him that he was the Night Hound, the Avenger, who would seek revenge on demons like him. This is the end of the video, if you guys want to see the next part, then don't forget to subscribe and like the video.